Hey guys, you want to go look at blue bonnets? All right. Our favorite. How's it going? Good. Yeah. Good. Can I put this on here? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, everybody ready? Buckle ready. up. See what's on? So Longhorns is very much a family, a family thing for how did you all how did you get started with all of it yeah. we got started with longhorns in 2010 um, I'd always wanted them on our on our family property and, and nobody else really did except for my granddad um, in 2010 we had a friend who just had too many on their place and wound up just giving us two heifers and we named them Dolly and Reba they were both red <laughs> and they were the greatest longhorns on the face of the earth um, and that, that kind of kick-started everything, and I think about a year or two after that, we sold off all the Angus and were straight Longhorns. That was a hard decision to make, because I've grown up thinking the Longhorn would just tear up our pasture, tear up our fences, and I didn't really want Longhorns. Are you happy that you did it? So when we got these, I'm very glad that we we changed it. They were given to us, but we, I wouldn't have bought them they were given to us to raise so I think those are the only longhorns we've made money on so far too <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite part about being involved in the longhorn industry I enjoy coming to the sales and watching Chase do the work <laughs> uh, around the farm and uh, when we started we, we lived on the farm and all, all the activity we did, and I just got too old and too decrepit to, to handle it. And they were looking for his, his dad was looking for property. And I walked in the house one day and said, Well, you want to buy this? Yeah, we want to buy this. So they, they're going to get that, that, working on getting that piece of property. And they've made some improvements that I could not have made. And it's, uh, turned out real nice. Well, and at most city events, it's not just the two of you. We see your entire family. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about everybody else's involvement. Yeah, there's about 18 of us. <laughs> so really, really everybody that we see at the events is, um, there's my granddad, my grandma, my mom, my dad, uh, my brother, my sister. Um, so they're kind of all of us there and everybody kind of does their part around the ranch. We sent my little sister to vet school so we can make it a little bit easier to get our health papers now. Um, but Colton does a lot of the, uh, the trimming and, and prettying up our animals before sales and futurities. He's a beautician. Yeah, he's a beautician. <laughs> Colton the beautician. I yes, like that. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, you know, my, my dad helps and my mom helps when we're doing record keeping measurements. Um, so it's kind of nice to have a full team. Uh, and what's what's kind of cool about it is being a family business or a family ranch is having everybody involved in the breeding decisions and the buying decisions um, on which cattle we bring into our place. Sometimes it's a headache, but you know at the end of the day, if we all agree on a cow we want to bring in or breed to, um, it, you know, whether we were right or wrong, it's cool because it was a family decision. What else do you want people to know about your program? About us, uh, we're we're taking a different route. Um, and we're trying to start breeding back in twist to our cattle. We, we picked up a few good cows, um, one from McCombs. Uh, we had some from G&G &G, um, that have real heavy twist genetics. And um, that's something that we want to breed back into. We all kind of were out driving around the pastures looking at the cows and trying to decide who our favorite one is. And uh, we, had, we had pried one away from Justin Henry before he became famous for selling Native Beauty. And her name was Dixie Gal. And she's a big red and white cow. She's 70 inches with a triple twist. And that was kind of our idea of a perfect cow. Um, we, we picked up a few others. Um, I think me and my granddad partnered on one named Lady Overluck. Uh, she's 80 inches and twisty. And um, that's kind of what we decided we wanted to breed for. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we have to look at them. And so that's kind of the direction we're heading. Um, using various bulls with a lot of twists in their pedigree and 
um, you know, some of our animals that we're bringing up or, or carrying that blood. So, um, not really chasing the tip to tip or total horn, but you know, just the beauty and the twist is what kind of we're we're going after. So we'll let you know in about 15 years if we make the right <laughs> That's decision. That's what I was just going to ask: is how long? How long do you think it'll take to 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 see if what you're doing is working for you? Um, everybody has told us if you're breeding a cow for twist. Um, the second you wean her, throw her in a back pasture and don't look at her for five years. Wow. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not really the most patient guy in the world, but I think everybody else will kind of keep me at bay. So, like I said, maybe not 15 years, but a couple we'll see. And um, we're starting to see some good, good horn direction on some of the heifers we've been breeding. And um, through AI and all that, we're, we're remaining positive. Is there anybody that you've leaned on for advice? throughout the whole process outside of your family? Uh, yeah, we've, you know, we've been really fortunate. Um, the, the way I started out in the industry with AIing and hauling is I got to meet a lot of breeders. Um, so, you know, Bob Loomis has given us a ton of great advice. Dale Hunt, um, Lane Craft has given us advice and so is Bear. Um, it, it's just been amazing. Every, Alan Sparger, Frank Heverdes, we've, We've been really blessed with a lot of friends in this industry that, you know, will give you an honest opinion. They all want to help you. They do. They, they all want to help. And, you know, if you talk to somebody and you say, what's your honest opinion about this heifer or this cow? And they say, oh, she looks great. You don't learn anything. And so these, these guys, you know, becoming friends with them, they'll tell you the flaws in that animal. Um, Cause we all get barn blind to our own cows. And so people saying what they think you should improve on, you know, you don't, you don't take it personally or anything like that. You just, you, you know, it opens your eyes a little bit. So, um, and there's a lot of others I hadn't named, but um, they've been a huge help to us to, to get us to where we are. Out of all that advice you were given, is there something you want to pass along to anyone else? Yeah, the, the best advice I think we were given is breed for what you like. Um, and it was at our first Longhorn event we went to, and it was Charlene Simpkin. Um, it was the Longhorn World Championships in Oklahoma City the first year we had it there, or they had it there at that time. And uh, she told us that. She said, breed for what you like because you're the one that has to look at them. Um, if you're chasing fads, you're always gonna be disappointed. Um, and if you're doing something you don't like, you're not gonna take as much pride in it. So that that's what I would pass on to new breeders, any, anybody thinking about it is, you know, whatever you wanna see in your pasture, breed for it. Because um, if you like it, odds are somebody else will. What would you say that you're most proud of that you've seen in your family or in Chase when it comes to being in the Longhorns? It's brought the family active uh, in some something that everybody talks about. It's, it's a conversation that any of the member of the family would like to talk about. Something you all have in common. Just right. It's uh, kind of like... Yeah, you know, I know. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. With a family of, you know, there's six of us and just my immediate family, um, and we're all different. You know, we've got, you know, Colton likes messing with cars. My sister likes, you know, animals and, you know, being, becoming a vet. My dad, you know, he's been a big sports guy. And um, something that the Longhorns, they really, they really brought us all together. So being, being a family, you know, we all love each other, but we're all different. And this is kind of the main thing we've all had in common um, over the past couple of years. So what do you, what did you do outside of Longhorns before you retired? I was an oil field uh, manager building uh, trucks and skids to go out and service the oil wells and was supervisor, manager over about 300 workers in a plant and then when all the business goes up you have to figure out who you want to let go and who you can keep and play that game for 40 years and uh, so it was nice to get out and get on your own and then this is something I really enjoy you have any funny stories you can share with us that happened has happened to you and well, Chase when you've been on the road? Real funny. I think the funniest thing that's happened to us is, is once we got started in the Longhorn, we had one Longhorn that 
got our horn hung in one of the round bell, bells, hay bell holders, and it got wrapped around the tree. And there she was trying to get out of that thing, and, and she just wasn't having much luck. So I had to take a rope and tie her where she wasn't so active, and take the bell, or bell apart, take disassemble it to get her head out of there. She had been still <laughs> against that tree. <laughs> it was like three weeks after we bought our first long horn. Yeah, I mean, so. they, they called me and said, she's got her head in the... And I said, what? <laughs> and I wasn't home at the time, and as soon as I got home, I understood what they were having a problem with. <laughs> Did you change your hay, hay holders after that? No. Did you change your hay holders after that? Your no, hay bale holders? no. No? No, just, uh, we just, got rid of all of them. We didn't just change them. <laughs> we, yeah. we roll it out now. Yeah, we're... Well, we have this new thing that we're starting this year called the Rapid Fire Round. We're going to ask you four questions, and you have to just tell us the first thing that comes to your mind. We'll do both of you. All right? Okay, him first and then me? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do him first. Okay. What's your favorite food? Uh, my favorite what? Food. food. My favorite food is peanut butter. I live on peanut butter. Peanut butter survival sandwiches. situation. <laughs> it was, it was one of my favorite uh, All right, what's your favorite song? My favorite song is The Eyes of Texas. Okay. Classic. Chase? Uh, man. Uh, my favorite song is... Oh, yeah, Wagon Wheel by Old Crow Medicine Show. Um, there's a new edition out by Chase Vasud and the West and Westbrook's <laughs> band. Um, yeah, Wagon Wheel. I, I love that song. Okay, what is your hobby outside of Longhorns? Most regular things is time after time other than Longhorns is my association with the church. And go to the church and associate with those people. And yep. Outside of Longhorns. Since I got off my parents' insurance, I had to quit cage fighting. Um, my favorite hobby, I, I love hunting and fishing. Um, just being outdoors, so uh, right now it's turkey season, so chasing some gobblers and all that, but that's really what I do. Hunting and fishing, longhorns, it's a great life. All right, and the last question is, where were you born? Houston, Texas. I was born in Austin, Texas. Well, thank you guys for coming with us. Well, yeah, we saw some beautiful flowers and <laughs> Is there anything else before we go that you guys want to share with anyone about your program or Longhorns in general? Oh, we just, we love the people. So everybody involved with it, all the friends we've made, um, you know, the opportunities that the Longhorns have blessed me with in my profession, my profession and personal life. Uh, we, we owe a lot to everybody in the industry, um, especially the cows. So we're just very thankful for the friendships that we've, um, you know, made so far, and we look forward to the ones in the future. So, um, you know, welcome y'all to come to any of the sales. Just come up and talk to us. We'd be happy to see you. And um, you know, or we'll drop by and see you because yeah, you're we'll, sitting yeah, in we'll, right. We'll come. We know a bunch of gate codes, so we'll, we'll figure we'll figure out. We'll come see you. So, so y'all have done y'all have done a great job. Very thankful for the friendships and letting us tag along on your flower viewing trip. <laughs> you bet. Thank you. We've enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Hired hand out. <laughs> <laughs>